fuck in here? <laughs> Hey there everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, pre-recorded content. It has been a hot second. Uh, but I am back and I am happy to be back and I am hoping to create more super awesome content that you will love. And today we are starting with Peach Leaf Valley, the demo. So my last uh, pre-recorded thing was the review of Great Gratuski Studios' love spell written in the stars, and this is their new venture. I am so excited to go ahead and get this going and give this a try. So Peach Leaf Valley, Seeds of Love, is a farming Otome game. So like, farming simulator Otome game visual novel. And for those of you who've been watching for a while, y'all know I love some shit like Stardew Valley. That's, that's my jam. Love that. So the fact that I can combine two of my favorite gaming genres into one title, mwah, chef's kiss. So, um, let's just, let's jump in guys. Let's, let's dig in. Let's see what we got going on here. New game. Maybe. And can I just say the aesthetic is already immaculate? Oh my god, look at her, she's so cute! Cottage core queen with the little waist corset and the puffy sleeves. And we've got some bunting up here. So her name originally is Serafina. See, we gotta make her part of the Newt family. So her last name is Newt. What should her first name be? I'm trying to think of some other things that have been in the hat on stream. Let's call her Sakura. Somebody mentioned Sakura and I hadn't used it yet, so. Let's call her Sakura. Sakura Newt! Yes. Prologue. A new start. So I close my eyes to old ends and open my heart to new beginnings. A quote from Nick Fredrickson. All right, and I love the butterflies. <sighs> God, I know I'm gonna spend way too much time playing this game when the full thing comes out. Here we go. Oh, oh, this is not, <laughs> this is not the cottage core game I was expecting, or at least not, ooh. At the very beginning, I just spat everywhere while laughing, which is really, really cute, right? I swallow a lump forming in my throat as my boss slowly brings his gaze up to meet mine. Why does this look familiar? I feel like these bookshelves were used in Love Spell, maybe. Who knows? You're fired! Great. <laughs> Great, thanks. What? If this is the type of work you deem worthy enough to submit to us after such a lenient deadline, then I honestly don't have much to say to you. Uh, boss, wait! I can resubmit a new draft or make any changes necessary. But, um, what is exactly wrong with the current proposal? I, I thought that- Everything! Oh shit, okay. Oh, he, he hates us. Wow. She looks cute in her office wear though. I can't help but gulp as my boss narrows his eyes at me, slamming his hands on the desk. I watch as he coldly taps on my art proposal before clearing his throat. <laughs> this is not the level nor quality of work we expected when we hired you as the lead artist for this project, Miss Sakura. It's almost as if you deemed this position to be a joke of sorts. So, this game has partial voice acting! Hooray! I think one of the stretch goals on their Kickstarter, which is uh, down below in the description box, is more voice acting. So if you like what you hear and you wanna hear more, check out that link. S Sir, I can assure you that is most definitely not the case. The urgency of my voice pitches my volume higher and I can't help but tense up in my chair. It isn't like that at all. I, I was beyond overjoyed and truly honored to be chosen for this project. I, I admit that perhaps my art's quality has not been the highest as of late, 
But I can change that. Uh, please, allow me to resubmit a new... No. And this is not something to be discussed. Desperation rises in my chest as I feel panic settle into my stomach and I unconsciously stand up and bow my head. Sir, please, I'm begging you. I cannot afford to lose this position right now. The reason I haven't been able to concentrate is because I'm in the process of getting evicted. Girl can't catch a break. My apartment complex suddenly announced their demolition plans and I've been swamped attempting to find a new place and finish this proposal, but I swear to you, I can- Tell me, why is it that your excuses are always more creative than your art pieces? Oh fuck, he went there. My heart feels like it stopped in my chest as I stare at the pair of ice-cold eyes staring back at me. For a moment, I feel like a deer peering into bright, fast-approaching headlights, seconds from a tragic fate. I can only watch my boss open his mouth once again, grabbing my proposal in the process. Perhaps you should have become a writer instead, if you're so good at coming up with stories. Well, mm-hmm. However... We need an artist, not a writer. One that can deliver work, not excuses. I can feel my blood run cold as I watch my boss slowly grab my art proposal. Oh, he's gonna rip it in half, isn't he? I bet you he's gonna rip it in half. The, zeri the very same proposal I had stayed up working day and night on for the last several weeks. The very same one that just a few hours ago I was so, so proud of. Your proposal was... Garbage. garbage. For lack of a better word. Ooh. I hope you will come to realize that as an artist... He narrows his eyes as he opens the cover of my proposal one last time before looking up at me. And throwing it in the trash! You are an easily replaceable asset in such a competitive industry. Bro, corporations suck. I hate big corporations. They're awful. I don't trust them. This is part of the reason why. If you're going to spend more time fabricating excuses rather than meeting a client's minimal expectations, then perhaps you should have considered a different career choice. You're not an artist. You're an amateur. Ow. And this company is not looking to employ amateurs. We are looking to employ professionals. One that you have already been replaced. Ooh, God. He didn't even wait. Oh, shit. Well. Okay. I can't help but rub my temples as what feels like the heaviest, longest sigh of my life escapes me. <sighs> I watch as all sorts of people stream like ants throughout the city streets, each with their own destinations in mind. Eventually, I can't do much else and opt to stare into a lukewarm cup of coffee in front of me. Fired and getting called garbage right to your face, huh? Definitely not how I expected my weekend to start. And she's getting evicted. I wonder, what's she gonna do? She's gonna live out her cottage core fantasy, but I wonder... How does that start? My heart feels heavy as I look up from my drink to gaze out at a clear blue sky that seems to stretch on forever amidst towering skyscrapers. And to think of how beautiful a day is today. It almost feels like the world's mocking me somehow. My attention is diverted when I hear the sound of a child laughing. Are we gonna get that stock noise? No, we're not. My eyes trail over to a young boy tugging his mother's arm with one hand and clutching a small sketchbook in another as the pair sit down at a table near my own. He opens the sketchbook, flipping to a page of a specific drawing before suddenly jumping up on the chair. The mother laughs as she watches her son strike the same pose as the crayon-colored character before her. Oh! Oh, and this is Thunderman! I drew him during recess when everyone else was outside! <laughs> Why, he's so handsome! Look at all these details! Oh, I'm so proud of you, Munchkin! You're getting so good at drawing! <laughs> Thanks, Mommy! When I grow up, I want to become an artist and draw my own superheroes! 
Oh, you're gonna be a great artist, sweetie. I just know it. You're already so talented and you work so hard. What else could you need? God, man, if only all parents of artistic children were so supportive. <laughs> because that is usually the complete opposite reaction. Oh, jeez. I feel my grip on my coffee cup tighten as I watch the beaming child show his mom more and more sketches in his notebook. The sparkled look of joy, hope, and happiness that beams in his eyes. It's one I remember well. I can't help but swallow the forming lump in my throat as I grab my drink and slam it into a nearby trash can. As I walk away from the tables, I shake my head sadly as the mother and son's laughter echoes in my ears and my heart. Don't be stupid, kid. As much as we all want it to be that way, the truth is, hard work doesn't guarantee anything in the real world. The only thing it'll earn you is realizing just how stupid those dreams of yours once were. For your sake, I hope that along the path of life you find something else that can make you smile like that. Because art just isn't worth it. Take it from me. God. We have all been there, Sakura. Oh, my girl. Without uttering a word, I quickly walk away to escape, watching a shadow of what I once used to be, too. A shadow of a happy, dreaming kid who loved what she did more than anything. The shadow of a person who doesn't exist anymore. My feet carry me down familiar city streets as the evening sun begins to set and golden hues illuminate the sky. But before I have a moment to take in the uplifting sight, an email notification from my phone commands my attention. See, I usually ignore email not- well, I look at it, but if it's not important, I just ignore it. <laughs> Maybe I should start paying more attention. Dear Miss Sakura, this is an urgent reminder. Please be aware that you have three days to vacate the premises at 302 New Street Lane. The demolition of the complex will begin Monday morning at sunrise. All tenants and belongings must be removed by then. Any and all belongings that still remain in the property by next Monday will be considered garbage and thrown away. Please act accordingly. Monday? What? That's impossible! I gawk at my phone as I stop to read the full email, earning a few strange glances from other passerby. My heart races in my chest as I frantically dial my landlord's number. After a few moments, a voice picks up. Hello? This is Frank speaking. <laughs> Hello? God damn it. Frank! This is Sakura from apartment 302. I just got an email from the complex saying that demolition begins Monday morning? How is that possible when barely a week ago you told me I had another month to move? Oh, yeah. About that, uh, sorry for the confusion, but there's been a, uh, slight change in the plan. No shit. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, you see, the company that bought the complex wants to start building a water park on it ASAP. And while the original agreement said a month... The CEO called me yesterday and offered me half a million dollars to stop next week. Can you believe it? Money. Oh, God. What? I know! <laughs> Ain't that something? Uh, so, yeah, you gotta get out of there. God, what a shit hill, man. Frank, are you crazy? How am I supposed to find a place to live and move into in three days? It's Friday! Yeah, I understand and all that, but, uh, money talks, baby! Oh my god, this guy, whoever the voice actor is, got the sleazy part down right. Oh god. Sorry about the short notice, but I'll need you out pronto! But Frank! Oh, uh, I've got another call coming in. Ain't much more to discuss, sweetheart. Uh, deal's a deal. By Monday morning, I need you out of there. No ifs, ands, or buts. You're a butt. <laughs> I scream out in frustration as the call drops, and I can only gawk into my phone. By Monday? Where the hell am I supposed to go? I just got laid off, for God's sakes. 
taking notice of the passing strangers and nearby security guards shooting me curious glances, I feel my cheeks flush red in embarrassment. <clears throat> I clear my throat as I continue walking forward. I need to calm down or I'm gonna risk getting arrested at this point. But hell, at least I'll have a rent-free place to stay by Monday. Just as I attempt to calm myself by having a few deep breaths, my stomach lets out a disturbed growl. I rub my belly as I glance at the time. Ugh. And to top it all off, I haven't been eating properly trying to meet that stupid deadline. What was it even for in the first place? Maybe I should just grab some fast food, go home, and try to plan out how exactly I'm going to survive the next 72 hours. Oh shit. As I barely take a step forward, a speeding car honks angrily at me, causing me to quickly tumble backwards in an attempt to dodge it. Who's catching her? Someone has to. Oh, never mind. An angry-looking man lowers down his window as he flashes me the finger. Hey, what the hell? Watch where you're going, lady! I'm walking here! <laughs> Shit. That's my line, you jerk! Where'd you learn to drive? Uh, another thing I really enjoy about the Grotowski writing is that the MCs are always just, they're delightful. Very relatable. I can't help but let out a shaky breath as I watch the driver flip me off again before angrily taking off. I look down to catch the sight of myself on the floor, now with a few bleeding scratches adorning my hands and knees. I glance up to see people passing by, left and right, but no one bothers to help me. Not so much as even spare me a glance. As I look up at the looming buildings on both sides of me, I can't tell what suddenly feels colder. The concrete of the floor or the hearts of the people in this city. This looks so familiar, these backgrounds. I don't know what it is. It just like, whoever did them is like, it's very on point with a lot of the anime I've watched. I let out what feels like the millionth sigh of the day as I wrap my arms around my frame from the chilly night air that's begun to settle in. As my apartment complex finally comes into view, I can't help but stop in place. Home sweet home, huh? Well, not for any much longer anyways. As I reach for my keys, I catch sight of a wooden sign that seems oddly out of place, resting against a street light next to me. Semi-annual farmer's market. Last sunrise to sundown. Today only. I raise an eyebrow in the direction of the sign points that I tilt my head towards the entrance of a nearby park. Farmer's market? I didn't even know those happened in this kind of city. But maybe they'll have something cheap and good that I can grab for lunch tomorrow. Just about anything's burger. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Just about anything's better than that nasty burger I had for dinner. Ugh. With newfound interest, I decide to make my way towards the park. Gonna go meet some sexy farmers, eh? As I walk into the park, the realization of what time it is hits me as I watch people finish moving large tents and baskets into trucks. Damn, I missed it. I didn't realize how late it had already gotten. That sign was probably put up way earlier today, huh? <sighs> Yay. More expired ramen for lunch it is. Mm, what a menu. Deciding to at least walk off 90% of the grease, 10% burger I grabbed for dinner, I stroll down the venue and spot various pokes, various folks still packing. I can read, I promise. The rustic and humble looking stalls of fruits and vegetables being sold grab my attention, but what intrigues me more is the people packing them. I watch as these vendors, most of whom are dressed in simple worn clothes and mismatching colors, laugh and joke amongst each other. Many are covered in sweat and dirt from a hard day's work, but the look on their faces is what really captures my attention. Why do they look so happy? Despite the visible weariness of the day, almost every face I can spot is graced by an expression of utmost joy. 
As they chat amongst each other and continue packing, one would assume that perhaps they had the best sales day of their life. But the many carts of unsold fruits and vegetables in the back of several trucks dictates otherwise. They seem so genuinely happy. I can't help but feel a little jealous. As I smile sadly and continue walking forward, I almost near the end of a long street. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, a big sign decorated with vibrant flowers catches my attention. Help wanted. Various positions open at Peach Leaf Valley. Leave the city life behind and have a fresh new start in the countryside. This, this would never happen in real life, ever. Oh my god. <laughs> a girl can only dream. I find my eyes transfixed on the words written before me. For some reason, I can't help but read the sign over and over again, almost as if waiting for the words to sink into me. Leave the city life behind and have a fresh new start in the countryside. I can only blink blankly as I mumble the line aloud, but the sudden sound of approaching footsteps distract me. I turn to look into the face of a short old man with a funny-looking mustache. The man shoots me a kind smile as he places a small crate of flowers down next to him before motioning towards the sign. Evening there, missy. I'm afraid you're a bit late for the market. I love him! <laughs> oh, I love him already! Uh, seems you might have missed all the good deals, but, well, are you uh, interested in hearing more about the valley by chance? Yeah. As if his question snaps me back into reality, I find myself instinctively shaking my head as I step back. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I was just taking a look. I I'll, um, I'll be going now. Girl, why? You ain't got no job. Why not listen? Is that so? Well, all right, then. Have yourself a good night, young lady. Oh, and here. gonna cry. He's so cute. I can't help but blink twice as the old man holds up a pretty flower to my face. The same type as the ones filling the crates next to him. I I'm sorry. I, I don't really have any money on me and... Now, now. Gifts aren't meant to be paid for, you know. At his warm words and cheerful expression, I can't help but smile shyly as I take a vibrant, blooming flower from his hand. Thank you. It's very beautiful. Ain't it now? Go on and make sure you take an extra blanket to bed with you. It's getting awfully chilly these nights around here. Wouldn't want you catching the sniffles for fun. <laughs> for fun? I nod my head as he shoots me a wave before turning around to continue loading more crates into the back of a small truck. As I turn around and continue my stroll forward, an appreciative smile forms on my lips. I bring the flower to my nose. A sweet, gentle scent fills my senses and I can't help feel my smile grow. You know, that's probably the nicest conversation I've had in weeks. I secretly glance back at the old man as he waves over at another vendor while beaming a giant smile. The sign I was previously so fixated on seems to glow as a beam of moonlight reflects off it. I look down at the small flower in my hand as I twirl it. <laughs> Just leave everything behind and start a brand new life in a little valley town, eh? <laughs> even just thinking about it seems so crazy. Almost like it's not even real. I just can't even imagine it. My pace eventually slows down as I stop completely. A few moments pass before I hesitantly turn around to look at the sign again. No. <laughs> it's beyond crazy. It's more like impossible, even for someone like me. Or even more for someone like me who's never left the city before. I mean, come on, let's be real. <laughs> I wouldn't last a day without proper Wi-Fi. I'd go insane or something. My thoughts oppose my actions I find myself standing once again in front of the sign. So, why? As I reach out a hand to touch the words in front of me, I can't help but feel tears begin to prickle in my eyes. 
As I trace the words fresh new start with my finger, I can feel my throat tighten. So why does something so ridiculous, so absolutely absurd, just sound like a dream to me right now? Why does a small act of kindness from a stranger have me feeling like this? All at once, it feels as if the weight of it all has finally caught up to me. I feel a lump form in my throat as I desperately try to swallow the forming emotions inside of me. Honestly, I'm tired. I'm really, really tired. It seems nothing ever goes the way I hope it will, and I, well, I don't really know what to do anymore. Somehow, it feels everything I do is hopeless. <laughs> I let out a shaky breath as I hear a pair of slow footsteps approach me. I don't even attempt to hide the tears welling in my eyes as I slowly look up to see the old man's face from before. He shoots me a warm, sympathetic smile as he points to the flower in my hand. You know, where I'm from, that flower there is usually given to people who leave on a journey. It's a way to hope for prosperous new beginnings wherever they might find themselves. Some might lose their way, but... The flower is meant to remind them that no matter where along the path of life they might be, they can always start again. I love that. <laughs> As I stare into the old man's eyes, I can't help but smile for only the second time today. His words resonate deeply within my heart. I gaze into the beautiful petals of the flower in my hand, and for a second, it almost feels like they themselves are cheering me on. I feel a gentle hand place itself on my shoulder as I look up once again. What's your name, Missy? It's Sakura. A fine name at that. <laughs> now then, tell me, are you interested in hearing more about the valley? Yes! It's never too late to start a brand new adventure, ain't it? Yes, old man, even though I don't know your name. I chuckle as I wipe a few more stray tears from my eyes and nod my head resolutely. I'm interested. Could you tell me more? We don't get to hear the spiel. It's incredible how the decisions that have the power to change our lives completely seem to happen in the blink of an eye. And from those very decisions, the seeds of our future sprout and bloom into the very lives set out before us. Well, here we are. Welcome to the valley. Earl, his name is Earl. I love it. Oh, here we go! Is what I'd originally say, but... Unfortunately, our destination lies just beyond this here trail of tricks, as I call it. I climb out of the passenger seat of Earl's truck as I look into a dense, steep mountain trail. Oh my god, look at her! Oh, she's so cute. Trail of tricks? Yep, this one's a bugger. For folks heading up into the valley, gets real slippery due to the rain this time of year. However, for those crossing by foot, there's a short little forest path right through there that'll get you to the other side in less time than you can say moo. I don't know what that accent was now. I am so sorry. <laughs> Will we be going by foot the rest of the way, then? Uh, well, uh... As much as I enjoy nature, I'd hate to leave my truck here to it. Uh, especially filled with all my flowers and veggies still on board. Here's what we'll do. You go on ahead through that path by foot, and I'll meet you out on the other side once I get this darn truck over this here trail. Sound all right? Um, 
But, uh, uh, are you sure you can get the truck up there by yourself, Earl? Earl lets out a roaring laugh as he places his hands on his small, thin waist before patting the back of the truck. Yeah, what does he look like? Yeah, he's tiny! He's a teeny tiny old man! I hope he'll be okay. Oh, you bet! Me and old Bessie have been together for a lot tougher than this, I'll tell you that! He named his truck Bessie. It just gets to be a real bumpy ride up there, and I'd hate for you to get all green and goobery on me. I have never heard that one before. Green and goobery. Goobery. Cause like, go a goober's a peanut. Green and, I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Besides, you get warm, gets you warmed up for walking. You'll be doing lots of that where we're going. I can't help but chuckle as Earl's positive demeanor shines through my worries. I nod my head and grab a small bag as I head towards the opening of the forest path he pointed out. Well then, I'll take your word for it. I'll head on through and see you in a bit. It'll be a Don Jiffy. Make sure you stay on the path now, you hear? And shouldn't you hear be H-E-A-R? Like, do you hear me instead of H-E-R-E? Sorry. Just, just a thing. Uh, can't be losing you in the forest on your move-in day. You see, I wouldn't know what to do with all your pink suitcases. They don't match my eyes one bit. Earl earns another laugh out of me as we wave to each other before I walk through a small open path between several bushes. What are we going to find in the forest is what I would like to know. Let's see. As I walk in through the dense shrubbery, I can make out a visible path heading towards an opening not too far away. I clutch my bag closer as I begin my trek while panning my head around to take in the sights. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen this much green before in my life. Even the air feels so different here. It feels so fresh. I walk forward a few more steps as I take in the emerald scenery around me. Trees, plants, flowers, some the likes I've never seen before, all seem to bloom quietly in place. I can hear the sounds of the leaves rustling in the wind as an incredibly calming sensation seems to reverberate through the entire area. This place feels so soothing, almost like it's... I figured she'd meet somebody. My inner monologue is interrupted as I unexpectedly bump into something soft. I bring my gaze forward only to stare into the greenest pair of eyes I've ever seen. What? Oh, surprised by the sudden proximity of a stranger peering into my face, I quickly step back, only to misstep and fall ungracefully onto my butt. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> and he giggled! <laughs> oh no, I'm in trouble! As I mutter a small groan, I look up to see the stranger chuckling softly to himself. Green hair? What's with his clothes? The stranger extends a hand to me with a warm, silent smile. I eye it for a few moments before choosing to accept his help. With a strange amount of ease, the stranger helps me back up to my feet as I shyly gaze up at him. Despite his strange looks, he boasts a beautiful, almost ethereal visage. And a respectable pair of titties as well, I must say. Dang, oh, and I love his, like, crystal details on, is it a jacket or a cape? I think that's a cape, because he's got his, his uh, jacket or shirt. Got some earrings, the eyeshadow, yes. Yes, King, work. And somehow, it's as if just standing near him makes me feel incredibly calm. I can't help but catch myself staring as I quickly clear my throat. <clears> throat> uh, I'm sorry for bumping into you. I probably should have been watching where I was going. Hmm. 
is he a little bit of an airhead? Look at him. Okay, yeah, he, so he's got a little tunic shirt, a jacket, and a cape. Dang, look at you. The stranger tilts his head as he shoots me another warm, silent smile. My eyes instinctively widen when he suddenly reaches toward the side of my face before slowly pulling out a four-leaf clover from thin air. Huh? <laughs> a clover? Was it stuck in my hair or something? It's a four-leaf clover. Ah! I tense up as the stranger gently grabs my hand and places it in the center of my palm without a word. I can't help but stare at the small clover for a few seconds before clearing my throat and looking back up. Um, th thank you for the help. These usually represent good luck, don't they? The stranger nods at me while flashing me a silent smile, and this time I can't help but flash one of my own. So, are you from around here? What's your name? Hey, kiddo! You over here yet? Oh, shit. <laughs> we forgot about Earl. I turn towards the opening of the path as the sound of Earl's voice booms through the quiet forest, and when we turn around, he's gonna be gone. I just know it. Several leaves seem to rustle as a few woodland creatures scatter about, rushing back into the trees. Just, aha! Just as I turn around to face the stranger, I find the spot he stood in just a second ago to be completely empty. Uh huh. What the? Where'd he go? Can you hear me? Don't tell me you actually got lost in there. No! I just found an incredibly attractive man! <laughs> no! I'll be right there! My eyes dart around to the dense greenery around me in a last ditch attempt to spot any signs of the young stranger, but to no avail. He's gone, as if he vanished into thin air. And the place he just stood in mere seconds ago, small flowers now seem to be blooming from the ground. I shake my head of any strange thoughts as I focus my attention back towards Earl's voice and head to the end of the trail. <laughs> oh, look how pretty! Oh, I love it. My breath hitches as I stare out at the magical view that lies before me. Whoa. Oh, here we go. Oh, and it's even got this, is it a, is it a lake? An ocean? Rolling hills, all covered in blooming flowers, seem to stretch on forever as they all meet the silhouette of a distant town. From this elevation, I marvel as both snowy, looming mountains and a sparkling ocean also meet near the town to create a breathtaking display of nature. I can't help but break out into a genuine laugh as a slight breeze picks up, and it seems as if all the flowers begin to dance in the wind around me. This here's my favorite part of the whole trip. I can see why, Earl. I look over to see Earl and his truck now parked beside me as he looks over to the view with a tender, loving smile. Welcome to Peachleaf Valley. Yay! All right, folks, and that, I think, is where we are going to stop for this afternoon. Woo! All right, so part one of the Peachleaf Valley demo is here we met a very mysterious attractive man and i'm sure that we will meet more mysterious attractive men as this series goes on if you would like to see the kickstarter for this go ahead and check the link down below the game is completely fully funded currently and a lot of the stretch goals have been reached but there is still a route or two that needs to be unlocked and i know y'all hate when there are attractive characters that you cannot date so make sure if you would like to support the game to go ahead and contribute to their kickstarter campaign which as of filming has 24 days to go I'd like to give another huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon for making videos like this possible. And I hope that I will see you 
in the next installment of Peach Leaf Valley next time. So make sure you hit that red button and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can know when I upload a new video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.